In 2004, a joint Australian and Indonesian research team made a significant discovery in Liang Bua Cave in Flores Island of Indonesia. They found fossils and simple stone tools similar to old Owen tools. These fossils belong to a small-bodied and small-brained hominin. The discovery indicated presence of an unusually small-bodied human species on the island to the extent that some people called them aliens. Welcome back to Anthromedia. In this video, we will explore the fascinating story of this species. These fossils belong to a small-bodied and small-brained hominin, famously known as the hobbit or Homo floresiensis. The fossils were relatively younger around 74 to 17,000 years ago, placing them within the range of modern humans in other parts of the world. What makes this find even more fascinating is that the layers above the hobbit fossils show no evidence of modern human presence, leaving a tantalizing question of whether these two species ever interacted. The most well-preserved individual, LB1, had a nearly complete skull, partial pelvis, limb bones, and bones of the hands and feet. LB1 and other fossils were characterized by their extremely small body size. The adult individual stood at around 3.6 feet about 1 meter tall, making them significantly shorter than modern humans. Some people have significantly criticized classification of Floresiensis as a separate species, identifying them a mere cognitive constructs or mental images and mems. The cranium of Homo floresiensis was small and had a unique shape. It had a broad vault, and the skull was relatively long in relation to its width with a brain capacity of 380 to 420 cc. The facial structure resembled that of other Homo species, with reduced facial height and reduced forward projection of the face. There's debate about LB1's small brain size. Some argued insular dwarfism, a phenomena where island species becoming smaller. Scientists have proposed alternative explanations for the small size and unique features of these hominins, suggesting that they might be individuals with congenital disorders rather than a distinct species. Some initially suggested that the small brain size of Homo floresiensis might be due to microcephaly, a medical condition characterized by a significantly smaller head and brain. Leron syndrome, a genetic disorder that results in short stature and small skulls, was also considered as a possible explanation. Another theory proposed that Homo floresiensis could have suffered from congenital iodine deficiency syndrome, a condition resulting from underactive thyroid function. This disorder is associated with small bodies and reduced brain size. In 2014, there was a claim that LB1 had Down syndrome. Despite the asymmetry, the overall cranial morphology didn't match modern humans, resembling early Homo species like Habilis or Homo erectus. The lower jaw, or mandible, lacked a prominent chin and had a developed alveolar planum, the part that holds the teeth. They resemble the features seen in African early Homo or Australopithecus. The teeth of Homo floresiensis were similar in size to those of modern humans. However, the relative tooth size suggesting megadontia or larger teeth compared to Homo sapiens. The mandibular morphology and tooth wear pattern suggested that Homo floresiensis had powerful chewing adapted for a tough, fibrous diet. The interpretation of Homo floresiensis postcranial skeleton has also sparked controversy. The creature had wrist bones almost identical to those found in early hominids and modern chimpanzees, and so must have diverged from the human lineage well before the origin of modern humans and Neanderthals. The shoulder morphology, including a short clavicle and specific humerus features, appears to resemble early Homo erectus rather than modern humans. Several primitive features include a relatively long foot for its body size compared to modern humans, a flat arch lacking the spring-like mechanism used to store and release energy during running, and a short big toe. These features are similar to Homo habilis and Australopithecines. The pelvis and femur exhibit a mix of features. While some argue that aspects like the wide pelvis can be found in modern human pygmy populations, others dispute this claim. The pelvic morphology is unique and consistent with a small-bodied hominin. The foot and shoulder morphologies suggest that LB1 might not have been well-suited for endurance running or advanced tool-related behaviors, which have implications for understanding their lifestyle. 
These physical features make Homo floresiensis a distinctive and enigmatic species in the human evolutionary tree, with ongoing debates about its origins, relationships, and lifestyle. The presence of the hominin fossils on the island of Flores in the Pleistocene states that this population was the offshoot of a more primitive, pre-erectus hominin species with a small body size and small brain. Some scientists argue that Homo floresiensis represents a distinct species, possibly originating from an early Homo lineage. It's believed that the ancestors of Homo floresiensis made a challenging water crossing to reach Flores, where they subsequently underwent a process of island dwarfing. Smaller body size can be advantageous on islands due to limited resources. Homo floresiensis may have descended from Homo erectus but experienced extreme dwarfing in body and brain size due to their isolated island environment. Homo floresiensis might have evolved from Homo erectus because Homo erectus fossils were found in Southeast Asia, including on some islands. They believe that when a population of Homo erectus got isolated on Flores, it gradually became smaller in size due to insular dwarfism. This happens when animals become smaller over generations because of limited resources and ecological factors on islands. Flores is situated in a region called Wallacea, characterized by low migration levels of both Asian and Australasian fauna due to strong currents. This isolation made it difficult for large terrestrial animals to reach these islands, explaining the presence of dwarfed species. The presence of dwarfed stegodon, which is an extinct elephant relative in the same deposits as Homo floresiensis supports the idea of island dwarfing. Specifically, Stegodon florensis insularis, found alongside Homo floresiensis, is a dwarfed form compared to its larger relative, Stegodon florensis florensis. One argument against island dwarfing, as the sole explanation for Homo floresiensis relates to the brain size relative to body size. LB1's endocranial volume, measured from CT scans, is only about one-third the size of the average modern human brain. This significant reduction in brain size compared to body size is challenging to explain using typical island dwarfing patterns. While drastic decreases in brain size relative to body size are unusual, there are examples of such changes during island dwarfing, such as Hippopotamus lumberlii on Madagascar. Researchers pointed out that other primates do follow the pattern of getting smaller on islands, and that environmental factors on Flores, like the presence of large predators such as Komodo dragons and giant storks, could have driven Homo floresiensis to become smaller for survival. Overall research supported the idea that Flores could have been isolated and capable of sustaining a small population of these small hominins over a long time. Some scientists also suggest that certain features of Homo floresiensis could indicate size reduction through a process called patamorphosis, where they retain juvenile traits into adulthood. However, more research is needed to confirm this. Homo floresiensis made simple Oldowan-like tools, the oldest and most primitive type found in the archaeological record. These tools were discovered in the same layers as the fossils. These stone tools resembled those found elsewhere on the island, dating back to nearly a million years. Evidence of cut marks on stegodon bones indicated that these hominins were butchering these animals. There was also some evidence of burnt bones and pebbles although it remains unclear whether these resulted from intentional or accidental fires. The small brain size of Homo floresiensis has been a subject of debate regarding its compatibility with the sophisticated cultural materials found alongside it. Initially, some critics argued that the advanced stone tools associated with Homo floresiensis must have been made by modern humans. However, researchers have found evidence of similar stone tool technology at the Mata Mensch site, dating back hundreds of thousands of years. This suggests a technological continuity between the artifacts found with Homo floresiensis and those found later with modern humans. The key point is that the stone tools associated with Homo floresiensis are not as advanced as previously thought. They appear to be part of a continuous stone tool production technique present from early times. This technique is similar to the African Old Dewan, which was used by hominins with brain sizes only slightly larger than Homo floresiensis. 
One of the key questions is how these small humans could have survived on Flores when modern humans were already present in the surrounding regions. Initially, it was thought that modern humans might have reached Australia and other nearby areas without passing through Flores, which has strong ocean currents. However, recent findings of early human occupation on East Timor, not far from Flores, suggest that the southern route from Sumatra, Java, Bali, Lombok, Flores and East Timor may have been used by modern humans, potentially bringing them close to Flores. Nevertheless, there's still uncertainty about whether early inhabitants of East Timor came from the north or south, and more research is needed to confirm this. In conclusion, the discovery of the Homo floresiensis fossils in Liang Bua Cave, characterized by their unique combination of short stature, a small brain, primitive skeletal anatomy, and simple stone tools, has led to a range of explanations. These explanations include considerations of diseases, as well as the possibility of microcephaly. However, there is no conclusive evidence to support a pathological explanation for these characteristics, particularly given that multiple individuals in the population shared these traits. Instead, the evidence suggests a more complex evolutionary scenario. Two leading hypotheses propose that Homo floresiensis is either a dwarf descendant of Homo erectus or descended from an even more primitive hominin species. In the former case, certain skeletal traits seen in earlier Australopith species reappeared in this lineage, but were lost in Homo erectus. In the latter case, Homo floresiensis would be descended from a species like Homo habilis, which has not been found elsewhere in Asia. Additional fossils and further analyses are needed to determine the true evolutionary history of this intriguing population known as the Hobbit of Flores Island, 